Okay. So in this talk, I'm going to consider a graph of a function of two variables and how you can geometrically think of partial derivatives in the context of that. So I have a function f of two variables. The domain is a subset of R2. And I have a point x0, y0 in the domain. Okay. And here's a picture. So is this plane going to give you the graph of the function? Is the graph going to be in the plane? No. What will the points in the plane denote? The domain. Yeah. So some points in the plane will be in the domain. Maybe not all. But the domain need not be everything. And and the graph, to get the graph, you need to take another axis. What's that axis? It's coming towards you. What's that? The z-axis, right? There's actually going to be a negative side to that as well, which we cannot access. It's the other way. Okay. But there's a z-axis. Okay. And how is the graph given? It's given by z equals f of x comma y. Now, I have this point x0 comma y0 in the domain. Let's say it's here. Okay. And I'm interested in the partial derivatives f sub x of x0 comma y0 and f sub y of x0 comma y0. So, the first question is, can you remind me how this partial derivative is defined as an ordinary derivative? What's the definition? You keep one of the variables. Well, so we are, we are doing partial derivative with respect to x. So you keep y not fixed. Mm -hmm. So you basically are looking at the function f of x comma y not, just a function of x. Then you are differentiating with respect to X. And evaluating this at x naught. So that's the definition. Remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me let's just do the similar thing for the other one. Okay. Okay. So f sub mm -hmm. f sub y x naught comma y naught. Well, what's that going to be? The ordinary derivative with respect to? Y. Y. Of what? X now, comma y. So this one was x comma y naught, the previous one, and this is x naught comma y. Why do we flip? Because now we are fixing x naught and varying y. There's differentiate with respect to y. And evaluate at? Y naught. Okay, so these are the definitions. Now, what would this be geometrically? Well, how do you think of this function? This is the function which you obtain by restricting to one variable, right? Mm -hmm. How would you obtain this function? How do you obtain the graph of this function geometrically from the graph of f? Hmm? What would you do? The intersect planes. So you intersect with the plane y equals y naught, right? So what does y equals y naught look like? Well, it's a horizontal line because you fixed y and you're lying next to it. Okay? In the plane, it just looks like a horizontal line. But when you're doing R3, it'll actually look like a plane, which is this horizontal line and the z axis. So it'll be this type of plane. Okay? Okay? Mm -hmm. So... That plane, when you intersect with the graph of the function, you will get the graph of what function? You just get the graph of this thing as a function of just one variable x. Okay. Okay? So let's just write this down more clearly. So to get this, intersect intersect the graph of f with the plane, what plane? You fixed y, so what plane? y equals to y naught. Yeah, you be careful, you're always uh, fixing the other one, right? And we get the graph of what function? The function which sends just one variable, what's the variable now? x, x. goes to? f, x, comma, y awesome. So, and now what do we do? Well, we determine the derivative at x naught, which is geometrically, what's that? Find the 
slope find the slope of the tangent line at what point at x equals x now I just want to clarify this a bit more okay now what is this plane going to be it's going to be a plane for y equals y naught right mm -hmm. the independent variable axis is the is parallel to the x axis and we just identify this with the x axis okay this y equals y naught line we just think of that as our new x axis mm -hmm. okay we think of the origin as this point the origin here is now this point okay and this was the original point this was x naught y naught the origin now is this point this is the x-axis and the thing perpendicular to that is the z-axis and the z-axis is the dependent variable axis usually when you have function of one variable it's y is a function of x right but now it's z is the function of x so this would actually geometrically it will be z equals f of x comma y naught right that's what it's going to look like geometrically and so what you'll be doing is you'll be having this graph of z equals this function of x and and you'll be taking the slope of the tangent line will be rate of change of z relative to x okay it won't be dy dx it'll be dz dx okay so in that context it's clear okay what about the second one so what would this say quickly there's a graph of f f with the plane x equals to x naught Okay, what next? Get graph of function of f x naught comma y. Well, so what's the input now? Y. And this is basically just z is f of x naught comma y and find slope of tangent line and here the independent variable is y and the dependent variable is z so the slope actually means dz dy okay okay great 